at your beginnings and ye shall know that I am the Lord. Hallelujah. That when all these things happen to you, that not men, but God himself, that you shall know that I am the Lord. God wants us to declare, God wants to declare himself to us. He wants us to know that he is in charge of our life, that he's the one that can do this. Bible says, no man receive anything except being given from above himself. You can't get anything except God release those things to you. That's what he's saying to us. That I'm going to multiply you. Something that's going to happen to you that God himself said, I'm going to multiply you. He's going to multiply your house. He's going to multiply your children. He's going to multiply. If that place, that been a place that I've been wasted, if a waste place, he said, he's going to turn it around. That place shall be built. Hallelujah. This is the promise of God. And this is what we can put our trust in it. You can put your trust in this world. That this is not the word of man. But this is the word of God. That has made the promise for us. So you don't have to worry. Hallelujah. You don't have to worry. Standing upon the word, the promise of God. Makes us not to worry. Because we know that surely that that word will surely come to pass. He said he's going to multiply you. Even though the remain, we have only five months to go. If I'm right, am I right? September 9, no. We have four. Amen. We have, yeah, no, this September, right? We have three months to go. We have three months to go in 2015. God is still promises, his promise for your life that is going to multiply you. No matter your situation, no matter how far you are, you can still be at the top. Hallelujah. Amen. You can still be what? At the top. Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to do better. Listen, that he's going to do better than what? Than your beginning. So at the end, what you are passing through in life, know that the end is going to bring forth good in your life. Amen. Hallelujah. Least you can lower the volume of this a little bit, the base or something like that. Is how we do better than your beginnings. He says it's going to be that as you are coming to the end of this year, God is going to do better than January. Amen. Hallelujah! Amen. Oh, he says it's going to do better than when you are one years old. That means at your old age, your old age is going to bring forth fruit. <laughs> Hallelujah. He said, I'm going to do better than your beginning. Everywhere, everywhere's place shall be occupied. All the years that locals and Panawa and Katabila has eaten away from you, God says he's going to give to you back. Hallelujah. I say you're going to receive it back in the name of Jesus. All what that be stolen from you, all what enemy have taken from you, I say, I'm going to give to you. I'm going to multiply you. That like you are coming out of paycheck to paycheck. Amen. I say you are coming out from paycheck to paycheck. Amen. You know, that the system of this, this place has been designed. Many of us, you have to wait to get one paycheck before you're able to buy something. And that's not the plans of God for your life. God wants you to live in abundance. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen, I have come to conclusion. That means what you don't have, you can't give. When you don't have anything in your pocket, you can't give it. There's no mop. There's no how preacher, how that sweet mouth, how that can take that thing out of your pocket. You check it. At, so there's nothing here. But when there's something there, how you will release. What you don't have, you can't give. Except what you have, you can give. Uh, the Lord made a promise in his word that is going to set to you. That is going to do better than your beginning. Hallelujah. Just have in mind. You see, the Bible said it is a matter of a little while. You are passing through something. Just for a little time, you're going to come out. Night can never remain forever. Hallelujah. Have you ever seen wake up in the morning and the, just, the night continue three days? No. 
That's not it. God have made a word. There shall be night and what? And there shall be day. So if you are passing through night today, know that the day is going to show up. He said, weeping may endure for a night. But what is going to happen? Joy will return to you in the morning. Everyone that in that mind today, in that estate today, the Lord will return your money back to you. In the name of Jesus. It's time for fulfillment. The Lord said to Joshua, tell the children of Israel to move forward. You have stayed along. You have stayed along upon this mountain. What is that mountain? They have been walking in that mountain for 40 years in one circle in life. Do you know people walk in one circle at the end, in the beginning of the year, they're in one place. At the end of the year, they are in one place. They counted, they, they do the account of that very year, nothing to show for them. And the year goes by every year, every year, that thing, every year. Today, if that's your story, the Lord will bring it to an end in the name of Jesus. That the promise of God for your life, that he says he's going to do, I will multiply men upon you, the house of Israel. You are partaker of it. Even though all of it, not only one, every one of us, that God says he's going to multiply the blessing. And the city shall be inhabited. Every city, every place, every place that have turned to something else. The Lord says you're going to occupy it. You're going to occupy this land. In the name of Jesus. Do you know you can do the things of God better when you are blessed? Hallelujah. You can do the things of God better when you are blessed. You can serve God better when you are blessed. That's why David said, don't feed me with the bread of affliction. Hallelujah. That's why he said to God, I don't want the bread of affliction. Satisfy me with every good thing. And the Lord answered him. If you have to you know some people, are, why they don't come to church? I've seen some people, why, is, why you don't go to church? Because I don't have the, the pint I'm going to wear. Hallelujah. Maybe he has been there one day, two days, people look at him somehow. He still managed to go, don't worry, I'm serving the Lord here. Second day, they look at him. Second time. This is all time, they say the look is too much. I'd rather stay home. Hallelujah. Well, if that person is blessed, you know, he'll be excited. He said, let us go. You are going to the house of God to serve the Lord. Let us go. Into, I'm happy. Because you're, you're, you know that is the source of blessing for your life. I want you to know one thing. In Proverbs chapter 3, look at that word. This is the promise of God for your life. That he's going to do better than your beginning. Listen very well. If what, if, no matter what you have today, tell him that you said to me, where I am, you told me that you're going to do better than this. And this God that you are talking to, he can do better. Hallelujah. He can do what? He can do better than where you are. That's why we need to put our trust in him. Open our Bible to Proverbs chapter 3. Proverbs chapter 3. He said we should put our trust in the Lord. That we should put our hope in the Lord. Listen. You can bank on on the word of God. If I say something to you, sometimes you probably check it, but God Almighty cannot lie to you. Proverbs 3, verse 5, it says, Trust in the law. Hallelujah. What that word say? Trust in the law. With all the heart. Listen, very, let's just put that there. Trust in the law. With all the heart. I mean, he's telling you that what he has said in that Ezekiel, that, that, that he's going to do something great in your life. Say, trust in him. That trust in me. That's what I'm going to do for you. Say, trust in the law. Many of us, what our issue is to not, we don't really trust him. Hallelujah. We don't really trust God because of what we see, of what that is around us. Sometimes when we see what is around us, what we see, we are afraid sometimes. Even though people around you advise you, you better take off your life so good. Don't end up in this. Don't end up. And fear get hold of us. Hallelujah. Fear get hold of us. And that's the plan of Satan. I've come to conclusion. I've seen that Satan used fear to capture life. 
Satan, what is going to happen to a man in life is Satan what to do. If Satan wants to attack somebody, is to f- put fear in someone. And if anyone wants to attack you, it's fear. If anyone wants to do something bad to you, if anyone is doing something to you today, because he's afraid. Hallelujah. Oh, if, if I have an enemy today, if I have somebody that is you know, doing something bad to you, that person is afraid of you. That's the reason. Fear. Fear is the main thing. Go and look into the scripture. I've realized fear. Fear is the strategy of Satan to attack. It's a way to attack. Pharaoh afraid of the children of Israel that they're going to multiply and they're going to be great. Joseph brother is bred and afraid the fear of his glory of his future not because of anything they have it's just fear satan used fear that's why god said you should use what faith hallelujah satan used fear that's why when god wants to talk to anyone today one thing that will say to you fear not hallelujah if god wants to talk to anyone to you any prophecy Anything that God sent to you. If God says something to you, if anyone comes to you, if I call you and say, oh, God, the Lord says something to you. God will not leave you into that place of fear. Never. If it's not of God. If I say something is going to happen, something is going to happen, something is going to happen, and fear gets hold of you right away. It's not of God. You can see something. Somebody can say something to you. That, oh, I can see something coming. And maybe it's a little bit bad. But God also he will make a way out. Don't worry. If you can do this, you can do this, you can do this. That's a way out. God will not give you a word without a word of a courage. Hallelujah. God will give you boldness in this word. God will not leave you in fear. Ah, they say this is going to happen to me. They say this is coming. What can I do? No, that's not of God. Any prophecy has to give and it can give warning. The prophecy can give warning. Also, it can give a it also it will give courage. Hallelujah. Also, the prophets also will bring boldness and also will bring a way out. Hallelujah. So he said, trust in the Lord. What is telling us in that Ezekiel that, that I'm going to do this for you. I'm going to multiply you. I'm going to do better than your beginning. Hallelujah. Many of us look at your five years ago. Look where you are and look where you are today. Look where you are before and look at your life. Even though you are still believing God for greater things, you are still trusting God for mighty things in your life. But you are not where you are yesterday. You are in another place today. Hallelujah. And you know that God has brought you from that place. He's taking you somewhere. Only thing that you have to do, not to question him, is to put your hope in him and put your trust in him. I don't know what God is doing now about my life. He's doing something about your life. You probably don't understand it. But he's working it out. Only thing you just have to do is stay with him. Believe in him. That the one that I've made a promise. He cannot lie to me. He said I have swelled by my oneness to David. That I will not lie to him. God have swelled by his holiness. To David his servant. That his children shall be upon the throne forever. He said I cannot lie. Even though his children sin. Hallelujah. Even though he sin took over of their life that he's going to do something great and not uh, and god made a promise if you feel when you look at the uh, when you look at the the life of solomon god said i'm not going to do this i will not take the kingdom away from him because of the promise that i've made for david god is not a man to lie he divided only took benjamin and also judah in one place the rest 12 tribes so we have two kingdom we have israel and Judah. Hallelujah. And why God sustained Judah? Because of the promise that God has made unto David that he cannot lie to him. You have a God that cannot lie. You have a God that has made a promise for you that he's going to do better than your beginning. Only thing you just have to do is to stay along with him. Is to put your trust in him. Is to believe him. Is to love him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you know God wants somebody to love him? Do you know that God wants somebody to love him? God also wants affection from us. Hallelujah. Yes, God is a loving God. Also, you want you to love him back. If you think that God is God of love alone, you don't need your love, you are joking. 
That God is God is love. He don't need my love. God needs your love. As how great God is, how mighty he is, he still wants somebody to fellowship with. God is, he can sustain, he can do without you. You cannot do without him. But he still wants somebody to talk to. He still wants somebody to joke with. He still wants somebody. He said, I'm looking for someone. Hallelujah. I'm looking for someone that will stand in the gap. He said, the eyes of the Lord look for and through. He's touching. God is looking for someone that will love him. And you are there to give him love back that he has made a promise to you that this is what I'm going to do. God will not disappoint those that put his trust in him. God will not fail those that put their hope in him. Not in a man. The Bible says, woe to a person that put his trust in a man. Hallelujah. Woe to that person. Woe to that person. To that person that put his trust in a man. God wants you. God wants you to love him. God in your loving is a law in your loving to him. You give him your time. In your loving to him, you give him the little thing that he has given unto you. Your loving to him to make him happy to, to enlarge his kingdom. Hallelujah. By loving him, you enlarge God's kingdom. You have, even though you don't see it with your physical eyes, but also your ways shows that you love him. Hallelujah. I was reading the book of Proverbs. I don't know why this one run into my heart. Do you know many of us when we are praying because of where we are before? I was looking at, I think Proverbs chapter 7, I think something like that or two. I will, I'll get the chapter. And a little bit shocking. I don't know why I'm saying this. Many of us, when we say, I make a vow with the Lord. Lord, if I do this for you, this is what I'm going to give to you. And later on, maybe you don't have it, you begin to regret of making that vow to God. The Bible says when you do that, God is going to scatter the work of your hand. Hallelujah. Never thought that you regret of making a vow to God. You make a vow and later on, ah, what, what's wrong with me? How would I make that vow before him? And you don't pay it. And say, so why did I make that vow? He said, when, when God sees that, he will destroy the work. It makes him to get annoyed. So that I don't want that what you have said to me. Hallelujah. I don't know what I'm saying. I don't know. Maybe somebody has made a vow before the Lord. I said, what did I say that? What did I make that vow to God? Ah, I can't able to pay it now. He said, when God sees that your heart, saying to him, ah, and he will destroy because your work. Because he, he will not be happy about it. Let's love him. He has to love us back. If God begin to deal with, deal with us according to measure of our sin, no one of us will stand here. Let's appreciate God. God is a patient God. Oh, he's a patient God. Slow in anger. Hallelujah. Slow in anger. Loving us. Who we are. He loves us. He loves us. We are. He cares for us. Put your trust in him. Lay not in your own understanding. The Bible says, in all your way, in all everything that you do in life, in all your way, acknowledge him. And he will guide your path. You will never miss it. When God is in front of your life, when God is the one riding your car, many of us get out of that seat today. Get out of that driver's seat. You don't know where you are going. Hallelujah. That's why we have been there for so long. I don't know the address. I don't know. Because we don't let the one that knows all things to be at the steering wheel to guide you to the right place in life. Hallelujah. No true master can drive a car. You can only have one driver. He said, maybe a learner. One, have one, one, have one. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let God begin to drive the car of your life. I assure you, he has made a promise that he's going to do better than your beginning. Do you know 2016 is going to be great? Oh, do you know that 2016 is going to be great? 2017 is going to be wonderful. 18 is going to be glorious. Hallelujah. Because he says he's going to do better than 2015. So I put my trust in him. 
Let us rise upon our feet. Uh, lift your voice and begin to worship him because he's faithful. He that made a promise, he cannot lie. He said, I have swear to David, I cannot lie to him. Only thing you have to do is to love him and give all our heart to him. Lift your voice and appreciate him. He's a faithful God. A righteous God, only one. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. A miracle worker. Let us appreciate him. In Jesus' name, we pray. When you look at Psalm 100, it shows clearly Psalm 100 revealed to our... See, when I look at it, if you don't know how to come into the presence of God, go and study that chapter very well, Psalm 100, and study it very well. If you want to get miracle, it shows us what God wants from you when you are coming. Go and study it very well. Go and look at it. It's not just, it's just a small chapter, but powerful. A small chapter, very powerful. Psalm 100 is a short chapter, but very powerful. He revealed to us how to get to, into the presence of him. That we just come, many of us, even if you have, if you will, oh, begin to pray now. And let us just begin to thank God for one hour. Let us begin to thank God. And if we only thank God today, many of us are going to leave this place. Bam! What kind of prayer is that? Nonsense. We just thank you. The people of the man don't know how to pray. You only thank, thank, thank. Just say, thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. I, the man should have said, fire! I want all my enemies on the floor. Destroy them. Kill them. That's what many of us want to hear. If you don't hear it, how is the church so boring? But, I, but if you begin to give thanks to God, he said, come into his presence with thanksgiving. So that's why you have a, we set a date, Sunday for him, just to give thanks to God. For what he has done. And when you give thanks to him. And when you worship him. Ever ready to pour more. Upon your life. More to you. More in your life. When you have, many of us when you give your children. Certain, certain things sometimes. When they receive it. You want them to say thank you. Maybe they don't say thank you. Maybe some children is slapped you. Yeah, say thank you. But God is waiting all the time. Don't say thank to me. For that little food that you have. Many don't have it, but I still provide for you. She just said, thank you for that job. I don't have any, but many, you know how many people praying for before me to give them job? You know, just thank, you know how many, thank God for the city. Thank God for the work up in the night, walk around, thank you. Thank God that you are alive, you can move your leg, there's nothing. You know, hallelujah, just thank God. You, many people want to be where you are. That's our life. I, I don't, I don't, my life is like this. I don't know how my life and some people are praying, ah, my father, that sister, I just want to be, just put me in that position. And also you are looking forward. That's our life. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But when you thank God for where you are, where you are today, who oh, is going to lift you up. Say, Father, I thank you for everything. I thank you for the blessing that is coming. Thank him for the everything. And thank you for the blessing that is coming. Thank God for everything. Thank you for the blessing that is coming. In the name of Jesus. Thank for the blessing that is coming. Oh, worship him for the blessing that is coming. Exhort him for the blessing that is coming. Oh, Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. Say, Lord, I pray. That's a little. Say, Lord, I pray. Do better in my life than August. In this month of September, do more better. Than August in my life. Because you have made a promise that you're going to do better than beginning. Say, Father, do great. Open your heart and begin to pray. Lift your voice and tell him to do better. Tell him to do great for you. He's ready to do it. He will do it and he has made his promise. In the name of Jesus. Oh, my Lord and my Father. Oh, my Lord and my Father. Lift your voice and talk to God. That God Almighty should do better than your beginning. In the name of Jesus. That Lord Jehovah God should do greater. In the name of Jesus, in Jesus' name, we pray. Ben, thank God for what, what you have today. I want you to thank God. Say, Father, if it's job, you are believing God for a job, you are believing God for a new car, you are believing God for whatever you are saying. Oh, Lord, I thank you for this place. But Lord, you told me you can do better than this for me. It costs God nothing to pour the blessing upon your life. God, don't use gold. God, don't spend the money. God, don't eat food. Hallelujah. He don't eat anything. He don't live in a house and he has all those things in his care. And you need it. You live in a house. You want a car. You are eating food. 
and your heavenly father has all those things. Tell him to pour it upon your life. He has it. He don't use it. He has it. Tell him to release those blessings upon you. Say, Father, release the blessing. I will give glory to you. I will give honor to you. I will worship you. I will serve you with it. That's one thing that God needs from us. He wants to trust us. If I can give you that money, are you going to be still faithful to me? Are you going to still walk in my way? Tell him that you, let him help you to do it and pour it. Everlasting Father, we thank you. In Jesus' name, we pray. May the blessing of you God rest upon your life. According to his word, that he is going to, he's going to multiply you. According to his word, that he says he's going to increase you. Let that God increase you in every area of your life. Today, as you are walking out of this place, you are